We go to chapter 18. <clears throat> moral hazard, speculation, and market bubbles. So for moral hazard, we already discussed it there earlier. Moral hazard implies that whatever happens, whatever actions you take, someone helps, we bear the burden. That is moral hazard. So yeah, I wrote, moral hazard is a situation where an individual or organization is protected from the consequences of their actions. So they have acted on one way, but whatever happens afterwards, they don't bear the burden. It's, they, they don't bear the consequence. Others will bear the consequence. As a result of this, it makes them not to put precaution on whatever they do, because they know, yes, when we get it done, someone else will pay for it. Just what Morella said. So, this frequently occur as those involved do not take precautions on whatever they want to do, as they know the burden is on someone else. So, they never take precautions, because they know whatever happens, they don't bear the consequence. Are you with me? So we're going to go to a typical example. They said a typical example is the bank. Banks are considered too big to fail. Why do we consider banks as people do consider banks? Uh, people do say banks are too big to fail. Why? Because when bank fails, when bank when they fail, people are going to lose their job. Some people are going to lose their savings. Investors will not be able to go to the bank to withdraw money. Government will spend a lot of money on support. At the end of it all, aggregate demand will fall. Yeah. So the economy will go down. So that means whatever happens in this country, in this economy, banks take uh, banks are so important to the go the growing or to the development of any economy. So that's why they are always considered too big to fail. So whatever we have to do goes through the bank. As an investor, as a, as a business person, whoever we are, yeah. all whatever, whatever transactions we have to do, it has to go through the bank. Yeah. So that's why they are considered what, too big to fail. So most of the time, banks, they know this. They know government is going to support them with bailouts. So what do they do? They take, down, they take those risks. Because they know there's a moral hazard. Mm. So that's why when you go to the bank, you need, a, you need a loan. In as much as you have the requirements needed, the collateral, whatever they need from you that you are able to provide them. Even if they know deeply that, well that you lack cash flow, they will, they will still give you the loan. Yeah. Because they know the consequences will be, bored, will be someone else's problem. Mm. Which is the government because the government would not want them to lose to to fail because if, if they fail a lot of people are going to lose jobs because banks take huge percentage proportion of the labor force yeah so just imagine certain those percentage or those proportions lose their job a lot of people are going to lose their money yeah. so all these things put together makes them to be on the safe side that's why government will bail them out is it clear? Yeah. That's moral hazard. So you have the question for the case study one and two. So we go to uh, speculation and market bubbles here. Speculation, what does speculation mean? It implies that you as an individual that have traded or that has an investment thinks of dishing out that investment because of a change in the future price. So you have made an investment and you feel prices might change in the future and you don't want to lose out. No. You really want to make profit before that change in price. That is speculation. Do you understand what speculation is here? So here I wrote, this implies to the situation where an economic agent buys or sells. So you are buying or sell because of a change in the future price. Do you understand? Either you, buy, either you buy or you sell based on a future change in price so that you can make profit. That is what speculation is. Is it clear? So this happens all the time in financial markets as traders buy and sell stocks, shares, currencies, and other financial instruments to make a small profit on transaction. So like in the stock exchange, we have the bear and the bull. The bear is that... Is that individual 
who wants to sell because there's a there, there's going to be a fall in price he or she feels that there's going to be a fall, fall in price of shares in the future that's beer that's how, who a beer is now a share uh, an individual who has a share but who is pessimistic about the future so he needs to sell or she needs to sell at now right now but he doesn't want to make a, a loss then we have the the bull who has an optimistic you know yeah. optimistic attitude that the prices will rise in the future so he buys more do you understand so if bear buys hoping that the price will rise in the future a bull uh, a bull buys a bull buys hoping that the prices will rise in the future but the bear sells feeling that the prices will fall in the future so the bull is optimistic the bear is pessimistic so because of his pessimistic behavior that's why he's selling but the bull because of his optimistic behavior is buying more do you understand yeah. so this are, this are based on what speculation so you are buying your shares you are buying more shares because you feel the price of the shares will rise in the future you become a bull you are selling shares because you feel that the price will fall in the future you are a bear is it clear yes then we go to market bubbles. When you talk about market bubbles, I wrote, this of course when rising demand for whatever reason drives prices beyond the level that might normally be expected. Market bubbles occur when normally, no matter how inflated the price is, it must not exceed $7. But now it's going to $9, $10. You, it was never expected. It has never happened before. Mm. That's what we call market bubbles. That's how market bubbles is here. Yeah. The, the price is going to the level at which normally it's not going to happen. You never expected it to happen. So you are selling at a price that you don't even think will ever happen. That's the market bubble. Uh -huh. Or you are buying at a price at which you never thought it's going to happen. That's a market bubble. Is it clear? So all these things are part of the activity that makes an imperfect market also. Do you understand? So speculations happen. Because speculation will happen, prices might rise. And why do we even have speculation? We have this speculation because there's asymmetric information. Either you or me, we don't get the information that we really needed. That's why we are acting like that in the market. Do you understand? Yeah. So a bear would have acted that way because of certain information he or she has gotten. A bull would have acted that way because of certain information he or she has gotten. So, there's always what asymmetric information. And because there's always asymmetric information, there's what? There's market, there's moral hazard, there's speculation, and there's market bubbles. All these things come because of asymmetric information. Is it clear?